All right, so how does a trust protect your wealth? I get that question quite frequently. Say, you know, if, if, um, if I create a trust and um, put my assets in it, how does that protect me? How does that protect my, my, uh, my assets? So let's imagine for a minute that all of my wealth resided in this BlackBerry, which my daughter in the back will tell you that that is the way I think about my BlackBerry. But um, so this BlackBerry represents my wealth. And now I'm going to, I'm going to step away from the mic for a minute. Okay, now I've just given my, all my wealth is represented by my BlackBerry to Barbara, okay? Now, let's say that um, somebody comes and they want to sue me and get my BlackBerry. So they name me in a lawsuit and they demand the return of, they demand value that is represented in the BlackBerry. Okay. Are they going to be able to take that BlackBerry from me? It's, I don't have it. That's right. It's not mine anymore. I don't legally own it. Are they going to be able to take the BlackBerry from Barbara? No. Why? Because she didn't have anything to do with that person. She didn't wrong them. They don't have any legitimate claim against them. Right? We're back to the we're back to the Knights Templar, right? With the gold and the, right? The Blackbird's sitting there for a purpose inside a trust. So that's really, in a nutshell, how a trust protects you. You've transferred legal title from your name into the legal name of the trustee whose obligation is to administer that asset on behalf of the, of the beneficiary, okay? Don't lose my phone, Barbara. All right, so what we're really trying to do with the trust is we're trying to create a fortress, an impenetrable fortress. And I've been at conferences. In fact, I was at a, a conference, uh, I think it was about three years ago, and a plaintiff's attorney was giving a presentation right before me. It was really kind of awkward. And he said, uh, and none of these structures mean it, you know, um, uh, a pile of beans because in my 30-year career, I've never once not been able to pierce any structure, including trust structures. So I got up after him kind of sheepishly, and I said, well, um, you know, I've been an asset protection lawyer for 27 years, and never once in 27 years has any of my client lost one penny from an attorney like this guy who was going after their assets. And I said, it could be that he's pierced every um, structure that he's ever gone after, but I would like him to stand up and say whether any of those structures were foreign trust structures. And he kind of had to sheepishly admit that that had never happened. The reason I, I say that is because, you know, if you have, let's say, a trust in California and you think it's providing you with good protection, and it very well, it very may well be exactly that. I'm not saying every person needs to have a, a, a foreign trust. But let's say you've got a trust in California with your wealth in it, and somebody comes along, use the example with the Blackberry and Barbara, and they sue Barbara to try to get my Blackberry okay, in California. What is Barbara going to do? She, no, she's not, I hope she's not going to give them the Blackberry, but she, the first thing she's going to have to do is she's going to have to defend the lawsuit, right? She's named in a lawsuit, and she's got to stand up and defend it. So right there, day one, the money thing starts, starts going, right? Somebody's got to pay for Barbara to go get the lawyer to, you know, to, to you know, represent her, and that's probably going to come from the wealth in my BlackBerry. Sorry for the, for the example, but I think you understand where I'm trying to go with that. Now, contrast that with the same trust in Belize. Then I have a Belize trustee, and... Somebody comes and says, hey, we're going to sue Barbara. We're going to sue you because you've got Joel Nagel's Blackberry and we want it. Um, as a matter of law, you can simply have the lawsuit dismissed and thrown out. 
because the plaintiff doesn't have standing in Belize courts to bring that lawsuit against the trustee. So there is no nuisance value. I don't have to pay $50,000 to defend myself. The matter is going to be thrown out. That's really how and why the, the fortress outside the US without the full faith and credit clause of the Constitution and you know, without this pro-plaintiff environment that we live in in the US is used to, to really um, intimidate. Um, you know, the story I told you yesterday about the doctor, or the doctor with the, with the um, Medicaid, or Medicaid, Medicare claim. It wasn't that it was impossible for those doctors, for those lawyers to continue after my client. It was not impossible. It was just a lot harder. And most people don't like a lot harder. You know, it's too easy to go after the low-hanging fruit. And with international asset protection, my job is to make sure that you are not the low-hanging fruit. Is it impossible for someone to get at the asset? I'll never use that word impossible. But again, 27 years, I've had clients that have made bad investment choices, which I have nothing to do with, and lose money that way. But I've never had a client lose money because someone was able to forcibly extract money from a foreign legal trust.